Uh, could you please call the case? Thank you and good morning, Your Honor. <coughs> this is case number IT0260A, the prosecutor versus Vidoya Blagojevic and Dragan Jokic. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Blagojevic, can you clearly hear and understand the translation? Yes, I can hear it for the time being. Thank you. Mr. Jokic, can you hear and understand the translation? Yes, Your Honor, I can hear and understand you in my native language. I would now ask for the appearances of the parties. First, the defense of Mr. Bergevic. Your Honours, my name is Vladimir Domazet. I'm counsel for Mr. Blagojevic. Uh, good morning, Your Honours, uh, counsel. My name is Peter Murphy. I represent uh, Mr. Dragan Jokic. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, good morning to my learned colleagues. Uh, Norman Peer Farrell, uh, appearing for the prosecution, and with me is co-counsel, Ms. Antoinette Issa, Mary Ursula Kind, Mr. Matteo Coste, and our case manager is Ms. Lourdes Galizia. Thank you. Microphone, please, Your Honor. Sorry. In accordance with the scheduling order issued on 24 April 2007, the Appeals Chamber will deliver its judgment today. Following the practice of the International Tribunal, I will not read out the text of the judgment except for the disposition. Instead, I will summarize the issues raised in this appeal and the findings of the Appeals Chamber. I emphasize that this summary is not part of the written judgment, which is the only authoritative account of the Appeal Chamber's rulings and reasons. Copies of the written judgment will be made available to the parties at the conclusion of this hearing. The events giving rise to these appeals took place in the immediate aftermath of the takeover of the Srebrenica safe area by the Army of the Republika Srpska, which I will subsequently refer to as VRS. Srebrenica, a predominantly Muslim municipality before the war, is in eastern Bosnia and Herzegovina near the border with Serbia. On 16 April 1993, the United Nations Security Council declared it a safe area which should be free from any armed attack or any other hostile act. Between 6 and 11 July 95, the VRS attacked and gained control of Srebrenica. In the following days, various elements of the VRS detained and killed thousands of Bosnian Muslim men while transporting the women, children, and elderly out of Srebrenica on buses. This case has focused primarily on the role played in these events by the Bratunac and Zvornik brigades of the Drina Corps of the VRS, and in particular by two of their respective officers at the time, Colonel Vidoya Blagojevic and Major Dragan Jokic. Mr. Vidoya Blagojevic commanded the Bratunas Brigade in July 95. Based on his actions as well as those of the Bratunas Brigade in the events following the fall of Srebrenica, the trial chamber convicted Mr. Blagojevic under Article 7.1 of the statute for complicity in genocide, Count 1b, aiding and abetting murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war, Count 4, and aiding and abetting murder, count three, persecutions, count five, and other inhuman acts, forcible transfer, count six, as crimes against humanity. The trial chamber sentenced Mr. Belgojevic to a single sentence of imprisonment for 18 years.
Mr. Dragan Jokic held the position of Chief of Engineering of the Svornik Brigade in July 95 with the rank of Major. Based on his actions, as well as those of the Svornik Brigade in the events following the fall of Srebrenica, the trial chamber convicted Mr. Jokic under Article 71 of the Statute for aiding and abetting murder as a violation of the laws or customs of war, count four, and of aiding and abetting extermination, count two, and persecutions through murder, count five, as crimes against humanity. The trial chamber sentenced Mr. Jokic to a single sentence of imprisonment for nine years. I will now address the grounds of appeal in turn, beginning with Mr. Bragojevic, who brings eight grounds of appeal. I will then address Mr. Jokic's seven grounds of appeal, and finally the prosecution's ground of appeal concerning the corroboration of testimony under Rule 92 Bis D, followed by its ground of appeal in relation to Mr. Bragojevic and Mr. Jokic. Lastly, I will address the prosecution's ground of appeal on sentencing in relation to both accused and the impact of the appeal chamber's finding on sentencing, which will be followed by a reading of the disposition of the judgment. In ground one, Mr. Blagojevich alleges that his trial was not fair because he was denied the right to counsel of his choice the right to competent counsel, and the right to appear as a witness in his own trial. He requests the appeal chamber to grant him a new trial to rectify these alleged violations. The origin of these complaints involves a dispute between Mr. Blagojevich and his assigned counsel, which led to a breakdown in trust and communication. The appeal chamber considered many of the issues raised by Mr. Bragojevic on the composition and competence of his defense team when it dismissed his interlocutory appeal at the outset of trial. Therefore, in assessing the violations under this ground of appeal, the appeal chamber focuses primarily on events following its interlocutory appeal decision that either would call into question the basis of the decision, or that might constitute previously unconsidered violations. With respect to the right to choose counsel, the appeal chamber recalls that once counsel has been properly assigned, as was done here, counsel has a professional obligation to continue representing the accused and may only be withdrawn or replaced if sufficient cause exists. Mr. Blagojevich argues sufficient cause on the basis of his claim that his counsel falsely accused him of trying to engage in fee splitting, thereby destroying all possibility of re-establishing any form of cooperation between them. The appeals chamber, however, noted that the assigned counsel did not breach any client confidence by raising the issue of fee splitting and determined that this issue should not unduly impact the relationship. Moreover, while Mr. Blagojevich seeks to reopen the issues considered and decided in interlocutory appeal by arguing that the appeals chamber and trial chamber failed to appreciate that the breakdown of his relationship with his counsel would last throughout the trial, his submissions before trial clearly indicated that he considered the breakdown irreparable. The appeals chamber considers that an appellant cannot premise a request for a new trial on a claim of a total breakdown in communication in circumstances where the appellant unjustifiably refused to cooperate with his or her assigned counsel throughout the trial proceedings. With respect to the competence of counsel, the appeal chamber recalls that an assigned counsel is presumed to be competent and that such a presumption can only be rebutted by evidence to the contrary. In his submissions, Mr. Blagojevich simply disagrees or complains about decisions made by his counsel. Moreover, Mr. Blagojevich 
Mr. Bragojevic's complaints about his counsel's performance during trial stem from his refusal to communicate with his counsel and instruct his defense team. The appeals chamber considers that this is not an acceptable basis for challenging counsel's conduct. Lastly, Blagojevich submits that the trial chamber denied him the right to appear as a witness by requiring that he be examined by his assigned counsel if he wished to testify in his defense. The appeal chamber has previously confirmed that an accused has the right to appear as a witness in his defense. The appeal chamber equally determined that this right does not prevent the trial chamber from exercising its authority to control the conduct of a trial by imposing conditions on the appearance provided that these conditions do not unreasonably interfere with the right to testify. The appeal chamber is not satisfied in the circumstances that the conditions placed by the trial chamber of Mr. Blagojevich's rights to testify on his own behalf, namely that his counsel conducted the examination so unreasonably interfered with his rights to testify that his right to a fair trial was infringed. Accordingly, <coughs> the appeals chamber dismisses this ground of appeal. Judge Shabudin dissents on the ground that Mr. Blagojevich was denied the right to a fair trial and considers that his case should be remanded for a new trial. <coughs> Under ground two, Mr. Blagojevich submits that the trial chamber committed several errors of fact resulting in his convictions. Mr. Blagojevich specifically submits that the trial chamber erred in finding that the Bratunas Brigade played a role in blocking humanitarian convoys bound for Srebrenica, erred in characterizing the attack against Srebrenica as an illegitimate attack directed at the civilian population, as well as in its findings on the role of Mr. Blagojevich and the Bratunas Brigade played in the attack, erred in finding that the Bratunas Brigade fired on Srebrenica during the period before and after the fall of the enclave on 11 July 95, erred in connecting Mr. Blagojevich and the Bratunas Brigade to the removal of civilians from Potocari, erred in finding that the Bratunas Brigade played a role in an attack on a column of mostly Bosnian Muslim men and boys fleeing Srebrenica, erred in his in its finding that Mr. Blagojevich had knowledge of and contributed to the detention, mistreatment, and murder of Bosnian Muslim men in and around the Vuk Karadzi school in Bratunac town, erred in its evaluation of the testimonies of Momir Nikolic and Dragan Obrenovic, erred in fact in finding that Mr. Blagojevich remained in command and control of all units of the Bratunac Brigade including Mohamed Nikolic and the Brigade's military police, and finally earned in finding that the Bratunas Brigade had a specific geographic zone of responsibility. For the reasons provided in the judgment, the Appeals Chamber finds the second ground of Blagojevich's appeal unfounded, and therefore dismisses it in its entirety, Judge Shabudin descending. Let me come to ground three, alleged errors relating to murder. In that ground, Mr. Blagojevich further challenges the trial chamber's factual findings underpinning his conviction for aiding and abetting murder as a crime against humanity and as a violation of the laws and customs of war based on the killing of more than 50 Bosnian Muslim men in and around the Vuk Karadzi school in Bratunac town. In addition to arguments raised under Ground 2, Mr. Blagojevich further claims that the trial chamber erred in fact in its estimation of the number of murder victims and in finding that these crimes formed part of a widespread or systematic attack against the civilian population and his knowledge thereof. In the view of the appeals chamber, 
Mr. Blagojevich has not demonstrated that no reasonable trial of fact could have made the trial chamber's finding on the number of victims murder. Furthermore, the appeals chamber addressed and rejected under ground two portions of Mr. Blagojevich's argument related to the legitimacy of the attack against Srebrenica and the role of the Bratunas Brigade in it. Mr. Bagoyevich fails to address the main aspect of the trial chamber's findings on the nature of the attack, which concerns the resulting impact on the civilian population after the fall of the enclave on 11 July 95. Mr. Bagoyevich's simple denial that he lacked knowledge of the context in which the attack occurred is insufficient to call into question the reasonableness of the trial chamber's findings on this point. Accordingly, the appeal chamber dismisses his third ground of appeal, Judge Shabudin dissenting. Under his fourth ground of appeal, Mr. Blagojevich challenges his convictions for aiding and abetting in human acts and persecutions as crimes against humanity based on the finding of his responsibility for the forcible transfer of thousands of Bosnian Muslims from Srebrenica. He submits that the trial chamber erred in fact in finding that the forcible transfer occurred and that he contributed to and had knowledge of it. In light of the circumstances taken into account by the trial chamber, it was reasonable for it to find that the request on the part of the Bosnian Muslims to leave Srebrenica was not the result of a genuine choice, but rather stemmed from the coercive circumstances in which they found themselves and the humanitarian disaster caused by what the trial chamber described as the VRS unlawful activity. Mr. Blagojevic's arguments on this point do not demonstrate that no reasonable trial of fact could have found that the transfer of Bosnian Muslims from Srebrenica was forcible. Mr. Belagojevic further disputes that he contributed to or had any knowledge of the forcible transfer. Under this ground, Mr. Belagojevic points to no error in the assessment of the relevant evidence, and the appeal chamber has addressed and rejected his challenges to the findings on his presence in Bratunas town elsewhere in the judgment. Consequently, in the appeals chamber view, Mr. Blagojevic has failed to demonstrate that no reasonable trial of fact could have found that he had knowledge of the forcible transfer. The appeal chamber accordingly dismisses the fourth ground of appeal, Judge Shabudin dissenting. <clears throat> Mr. Blagojevic's fifth ground of appeal relates to his conviction for aiding and abetting persecutions as a crime against humanity through murder, cruel and inhuman treatment, terrorizing of Bosnian Muslim civilians in Srebrenica and Potocari, and through the forcible transfer of Bosnian Muslim from the Srebrenica enclave. Mr. Blagojevic submits that the trial chamber erred, in fact, in finding that he was aware of the discriminatory intent of the perpetrators, as well as the discriminatory context in which the underlying crimes were committed. The appeal chamber has already addressed and rejected Mr. Bergoyevich's arguments disputing the trial chamber's characterization of the nature and purpose of the attack against the civilian population of Srebrenica under other grounds of his appeal. Mr. Blagojevich further fails to address the majority of the evidence relied on by the trial chamber in determining that the attack against the civilian population of Srebrenica was discriminatory in nature, beyond disagreeing with the conclusion reached from it, nor does he support his arguments with any relevant reference to the trial record. Accordingly, the appeals chamber dismisses this ground of appeal, Judge Shabudin dissenting. I come to the sixth ground of appeal. <clears throat> 
The trial chamber convicted Mr. Blagojevich for complicity in genocide as an aider and a better. Mr. Blagojevich submits that the trial chamber erred in fact in finding that he had knowledge of the commission of the crime of genocide or genocidal intent of the principal perpetrators. In disputing his awareness of the commission of genocide and of the genocidal intent of the principal perpetrators, Mr. Blagojevich points to the trial chamber's finding that he lacked knowledge about the mass killings, which the trial chamber determined to form part of the genocide. The prosecution responds that the fact that Mr. Blagojevich was unaware of the mass killings is irrelevant to his liability as an aider and the better of the crime of genocide. The appeals chamber accepts that the forcible transfer operation, the separation, and the mistreatment and murders in Bratunac town are relevant considerations in assessing whether the principal perpetrators had a genocidal intent. However, the appeal chamber is not convinced by the trial chamber's reasoning that the forcible transfer operation alone or coupled with the murders and mistreatment in Bratunas town would suffice to demonstrate the principal perpetrator's intent to destroy the protected group. The Kersuch appeal judgment clearly held that forcible transfer does not constitute in and of itself a genocidal act. And it is simply a relevant consideration as part of the overall factual assessment. Similarly, the appeal chamber notes that opportunistic killings by their very nature provide a very limited basis for inferring genocidal intent. In the view of the appeals chamber, no reasonable trier of fact could find beyond reasonable doubt that without knowledge of the mass killings, Mr. Blagojevich's awareness of the other facts related to the forcible transfer operation shows that he had knowledge of the principal perpetrator's genocidal intent. On the basis of the foregoing, the appeal chamber grants Mr. Blagojevich six grounds of appeal and reverses his conviction for complicity in genocide. Ground seven. Under this ground of appeal, Mr. Blagojevich raises four errors of law and fact in connection with his conviction for aiding and abetting, including an alleged legal error in the definition of aiding and abetting and alleged factual errors related to his knowledge of the underlying crimes, whether he made Bratunas Brigade resources available and whether this constituted substantial assistance. The Appeals Chamber considers that Mr. Blagojevich has failed to identify any legal error on the part of the Trial Chamber in setting forth the applicable law on aiding and abetting. Further, with regard to his knowledge of the underlying crimes, Mr. Blagojevich simply incorporates by reference arguments advanced elsewhere in his appeal, which the Appeals Chamber has addressed and rejected with the exception of his challenge to his conviction for complicity in genocide. As explained in the judgment, Mr. Blagojevich's submissions are insufficient to call into question the reasonableness of the trial chamber's findings that he permitted Bratunas Brigade resources to facilitate the commission of the crimes. Furthermore, Mr. Blagojevich has not demonstrated error in the trial chamber's finding that the Bratunac Brigade substantially contributed to the commission of the crimes. In making its findings, the trial chamber was aware of the more limited scope of assistance provided by the Bratunac Brigade in relation to other elements of the VRS and civilian authorities. Nonetheless, the trial chamber described the contribution of the resources made available by Mr. Blagojevich as practical assistance to the crimes, which had a substantial effect on the commission of the crimes themselves. The appeal chamber recalls that in a similar context, it reached the same conclusion in the Kerstich appeal judgment. For the reasons given in connection with the sixth ground of appeal,
The appeal chamber grants Mr. Blagojevic seventh round of appeal with respect to the crime of genocide and dismisses his appeal against the trial chamber findings relating to aiding and abetting in all other respects. Judge Chabudin dissents. In its uh, eighth ground of appeal, Mr. Blagojevic submits that the trial chamber erred in law in assessing the aggravating and mitigating factors in assessing his sentence. He contends that the trial chamber's emphasis on the gravity of the discriminatory nature of the crime of persecutions reflects that it impermissibly aggravated his sentence based on a factor that is also an element of the crime. Mr. Blagojevich also submits that the trial chamber did not properly take into account that he was not among the major participants in the crimes. The appeal chamber, however, notes that the trial chamber considered Mr. Blagojevich's knowledge and the form of assistance that he provided to the principal perpetrators in determining his sentence. The appeal chamber finds that Mr. Blagojevich has not pointed to any discernible error on the part of the trial chamber in determining his sentence. Accordingly, the appeal chamber dismisses this ground of appeal in its entirety. Judge Shabudin dissenting. I come now to the appeal of Dragan Jokic. Uh, Mr. Jokic submits under his first and second grounds of appeal that the trial chamber erred when it found that he acted with the requisite mens rea in relation to the killings at Orahovac, Pilica School, Brangevo Military Farm, and Kozlok. In particular, Mr. Jockey submits that the trial chamber erred, in fact, in finding that he was aware of the impending executions of detainees at these sites. For the reasons provided in the judgment, the appeal chamber finds Mr. Yoki's first and second grounds of appeal unfounded and therefore dismisses them in their entirety. Under his fourth ground, Mr. Yoki submits that the trial chamber erred by convicting him as an aider and a better when the evidence against him clearly shows that his conduct was confined to ex post facto assistance. This ground turns on Mr. Jockey's apparent assumption that the trial chamber had before it no evidence on which it could reasonably conclude that he provided ex ante or contemporaneous assistance to the mass killings at Pilica School, Brangevo Military Farm, and Kozlok. That, however, was not the case. The appeal chamber considers the trial chamber to have reasonably concluded that Mr. Jokic was integrally involved in the murder operation spanning multiple mass killing sites. Accordingly, the appeal chamber dismisses this ground of appeal. Under his third ground of appeal, Mr. Jockey submits that the trial chamber erred in law by holding that his acts as found constituted the actus reus of aiding and abetting. Mr. Jockeys posits as a legal element of the actus reus of aiding and abetting that the practical assistance given to the perpetrators, in addition to having a substantial effect on the commission of the crime, must be specifically or sufficiently directed to this end. In relation to the incidents which took place at the mass execution sites, Mr. Jockeys argues that any assistance the principal perpetrators may have derived from his ordering a particular member of the Zvornik Brigade Engineering Company to go with equipment to a particular place at a particular time was too remote or insubstantial to have had a substantial effect on the commission of the crime. The Appeals Chamber observes that a finding of specific direction will often be implicit in the finding that the accused has provided practical assistance to the principal perpetrator which had a substantial effect on the commission of the crime. The appeal chamber considers that it was reasonable for the trial chamber to conclude that the assistance Mr. Jokic provided in his capacity 
as chief of engineering in deploying engineering machinery and personnel for the burial operation at Orakovac, Pilica, Brangevo military farm and Kozluk had a substantial effect on the commission of the mass executions at these three sites. Assisting the organizer of the mass executions with the disposal of the victims was substantial to the achievement of the murder operation. Accordingly, the appeal chamber dismisses this ground of appeal. Under his fifth ground of appeal, Mr. Jokic submits that the trial chamber erred by convicting him when the evidence against him clearly showed that there was an equally probable explanation for his acts and omissions that was consistent with innocence. That is, that it was in the interest of public health that the bodies of the victims be buried without delay. The trial chamber found and the appeal chamber confirmed that Mr. Jockeys substantially contributed to the mass executions when he sent engineering equipment to the execution sites and that he did this knowing that the equipment would be used to dig mass graves for the victims. Even if Mr. Jokic were concerned about public safety and health, this would not change the fact that his actions substantially contributed to the crimes or the conclusion that he did so with knowledge that his actions would assist the organizer of the murder campaign. Ground five is accordingly dismissed.